All right all and welcome to another IMSA 2024 GTP team preview. This one looking ahead at the Chip Ganassi Racing Run Cadillac Racing and their 01 Cadillac V Series R. Getting right into it then, kicking off with the 2023 season recap. And it's fair to say the 01 Cadillac had its fair share of misfortune in 2023. Arguably the unluckiest car on the GTP grid over the course of the season. They ended up 7th in the championship, just 60 points off the eventual title winners. Which if you're not an expert on the IMSA point system, 60 points is smaller than the difference between first and fourth in one race. It really was that close between seven cars in GTP last year. They ended up second in the Michelin Endurance Cup and also took one race win at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Going into it race by race then, starting off at the beginning at Daytona, the only IMSA race where the team ran two cars. He had the 01 car, which was Renga van der Zander and Sebastian Bourdais for the full season, joined at the Michelin Endurance Cup rounds by Scott Dixon. And then at Daytona, you also had the 02 of Earl Bamba, Alex Lynn and Richard Westbrook, which would then go on to embark on a World Endurance Championship campaign. Daytona, very solid showing and very promising start by both of the Ganassi cars. They had the reliability, they had the consistency, they had the long run speed. All that was missing was the short run pace compared to the Acuras and that's why they ended up finishing both cars on the lead lap but in third and fourth positions. Long run, long green flag run during the night and into the early hours, into the morning where it was the 01 in control of the race, about 45 seconds clear of the Maya Shank Acura. And this is all what ifs and if buts and maybes, but had the race ran to WEC safety car caution, full course yellow rules instead of the IMSA ones, there's definitely an argument to be made that Cadillac would have won Daytona, which doesn't mean much, but it was very promising as a sign towards their potential for the year ahead. At Sebring, they were definitely the ones with the best race pace. They were in control of that race before a fire broke out whilst they were leading and they were out on the spot. And then it was another DNF next time out at Long Beach from third on the grid. Believe it was a mechanical failure, put Sebastian Bourdais into the wall at turn one, and their race there was over before it really began. And then we bounce onto a third DNF in a row, but this one wasn't an IMSA competition, this one was in the World Endurance Championship. I'm going to focus just on the IMSA car when it made its WEC appearances. The 01, it was the 3 in the WEC, the yellow car, we'll just call it the yellow one. And they had a power steering failure going through a Rouge and Radion whilst on course for a podium in the 6 hours of Spa, which put van der Zander very heavily into the wall and into retirement there. You might remember him bowing when he got out of the car. Then things started to improve a little. Laguna Seca, they took the race win, everything went right for them there and they were able to capitalise and take the race victory. That sets them up neatly for Le Mans where they get into Hyperpole. In Hyperpole, Bordet, the hometown hero, another fire denies him a fair shot at fighting for pole position and in the race, it was again a bit like Daytona. They had the long run speed, the consistency, reliability. This time, what was missing was a little bit of luck as Bordet got rear-ended entering a slow zone very early on and the issue there was the car behind hadn't received the automatic flagging signal to say it was a slow zone. Just a glitch in the system and a very costly one indeed. Those repairs got carried out, the car lost the lead lap and it never managed to recover it. So it was a fourth place finish 
for Bordet, Van der Zander and Dixon as Ganassi made their top class Le Mans debut. The sister car in third, so overhauled, Le Mans was a solid event for Cadillac. Then we go into the second half of the IMSA season, kicking off at Watkins Glen, where a very rare mistake saw Bordet spin the car. It tapped the wall, bit of damage, but they got lucky on this occasion as it was a very attritional weekend for the GTP class, so they still were able to pick up a fifth place finish. Next time out at Canadian Time Motorsports Park, not so lucky. Another big accident for Van der Zander, this one very late on. But the only kind of comfort they could take from that one is they weren't fighting for the win or the podium there anyway. And then going into the final three races of the season, it was a solid fourth place at Road America. Indianapolis, they got caught up in the Turn 1 melee and were able to convert that into a P7 come the chequered flag. And then Petit Le Mans, they very much entered as title outsiders. They still had a shot at it, but they needed pretty much everything to go right for them. They did a solid job on the day, took home a second place finish, but it wasn't enough to improve them from 7th in the championship. So overall, 2023, it was a solid and promising season, but they have to be disappointed. This is Ganassi after all. We know Chip likes winners and they only managed to take one win. But a lot of good signs if you're thinking long term and how they might fare in 2024. Speaking of 2024, and it is a year of continuity. It is the same full-time drivers, Bordet and Van der Zander. It is the same third driver for the Endurance Cup in Dixon. But this time, the only difference is joining them for the Rolex 24 is Alex Pelot, the defending IndyCar Series champion, who also drove with Bordet, Van der Zander and Dixon at Daytona back in 2022. So even he isn't all that new, although he is new to the GTP car. So it'll be fun at the Raw seeing him get up to speed with that one. The only other particular noted difference with the programme is that they are just focusing on the one car at Daytona this year, no addition of the WEC entry, which makes a lot of sense given the media talks in several places about them perhaps not quite being granted the budget that Cadillac Racing would want for the WEC side. Why add on this extra 24-hour race, especially when Cadillac already have two class crews in the field you've got the ganassi car and then you've also got the action express entry which we'll get on to in another preview another day not too much to say about the driver lineup then given it is consistent and they're all very good this is probably going to turn into more of a 2023 review than actually a 2024 preview certainly i'm very happy with them keeping the lot of them on Bordet still has plenty of speed, as does Van der Zander, as does Dixon, and as does Alex Pelot. So that's your driver summary. They're all very good. Can't really fault anything on that front. Which means we can pretty much jump straight on to their 2024 targets because nothing's changing. So there's nothing to discuss on the changes. And for 2024, it would be very easy for me to do the same as I did for WTR Andretti and go win, 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 win throughout the season. But obviously that's a bit dull. So focusing in a bit more, I think it's just about trying to find that little element of consistency and luck that they were missing for 2023. Whatever it is, if they need to stop walking under ladders on the Tuesday of race week, it might, might make the difference depending on how superstitious some of them are. More specifically, I think the aims have to be a Le Mans podium for this crew. That would be particularly enjoyable. Assuming they get the invite, Cadillac have confirmed they're applying with this car again, but we won't find out until February whether they make the entry list. If they are rejected, I would be shocked, and I think it's fair to say it'd be quite the scandal if Cadillac have one of their IMSA cars turned away. Focusing on IMSA targets, you have to say they have to be aiming for the championship. 
and I think the way for them to build that it's going to be looking at the big race in particular that was where they had their strength if you look at it Daytona we've already gone over they were very quick could have won same story at Sebring same story at Petit Le Mans they were generally stronger in the endurance rounds than they were in the sprint races so that is probably the place that they would be able to build a title challenge in 2024 and that also sets them up very neatly for the Michelin Endurance Cup. A lot of pressure when you're Chip Ganassi racing. Chip likes winners. The team are the most successful in the Rolex 24 history. But they now haven't won overall in nine years. So they'll definitely be desperate to change that one. So if they can get that underway, that would be a very strong start to the season and a great place to build off. The thing with how wildly inconsistent everyone was in IMSA last year is it's hard to say here's the particular place they need to up a level as any 1% change anywhere has huge impacts on the championship. Had they not had that fire at Sebring, they'd almost have certainly been champions had nothing else changed throughout the year. And they're just the little things which make a huge difference and the little things that the 01 crew will be hoping to avoid in 2024.